everyone welcome back to my channel I'm so happy that you're here again thank you so much for watching this video is very long overdue 12 months ago I posted a video about skincare I'm sure a lot of you have seen it it did really well a lot of people found it very helpful thank you so much for that and the positive feedback I really appreciate it seeing all those comments of people saying thank you so much you really helped me I've been struggling with this I didn't know what to do and your video was really helpful that <laughs> that was the best feeling so I want to thank you all for leaving such kind words under that video and I'm so happy and glad that it was useful to you and it helped you in some way that's why I'm making this video again today I'm not actually doing a skincare routine video I'm actually going to talk about the products that I'm using currently right now in 2020 and what I've basically refined my skincare regimen or my skincare products too. For those of you who haven't seen the video, I will link it down below or somewhere on the screen, but you can also just go to my channel and find it there. The video was about a skin condition called Malassezia folliculitis or Pittersporum folliculitis or more commonly known as fungal acne. The video was more scientific. It was talking about the chemistry of fungal acne a little bit more and a lot of you liked that aspect of the video how it was more science based and the science background you guys appreciate it so I hope that this video gives you that same essence I did not want to leave a lot of the time I did not put on makeup that much because the makeup honestly made it look worse and I was just paranoid that it was going to make the fungal acne worse because you know piling on cosmetics is not the best thing you want to do for your skin especially if you're dealing with you know something like fungal acne I just wanted to let my skin breathe and kind of allow it to you know recuperate but I saw that it was not getting any better if anything was getting worse so I was like okay you know what Intermission. I need to figure out what the heck is going on here and that's when I started doing my research after I talk about the products when I use them and what order I use them in I actually want to also share with you all some little habits that I've picked up that have actually significantly improved my malassezia and I hope that you might see some progress in your malassezia by picking up those habits as well. The first thing that I'm going to get into is my cleanser because that's kind of the first step. For all my OG viewers, you know how much I love this product. This is the Vanny Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser and I still use this. I have not put any other cleanser on my face since that video. I swear by this cleanser. It's pretty much the only cleanser I've tried so far that has not given me any reactions in terms of malassezia. I get this off Amazon every few months. It's free of dyes, fragrance, masking fragrance, linolin, parabens, formaldehyde, and other preservatives. Okay, a lot of you are going to roast me for this. I do not wash my face with the cleanser in the morning. I don't. I actually most of the time use the Vanny Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser in the p.m. at night. I can't say only because a lot of the time I will use it in the morning especially if I have to put makeup on or if I'm going outside and I don't you know <laughs> woke up with face crust don't want to have that. I do this once a day surprisingly and I love it so much. The next product that I want to talk about is my good old squalene plant-derived squalene. I saw a lot of people in the comments of that video getting very concerned that I was using squalene for the reasons of animal ethics. Guys, I know. <laughs> That's why I made sure that all the products were vegan because squalene, they, I believe, derive it from sharks or dolphins, I, I believe. I'm not sure about the dolphins one. I think sharks. So don't do that. Just get the plant-derived stuff. Honestly, it's... Usually they derive squalene from either the olive plant or the coconut plant, I believe, but it's not like coconut oil or olive oil. It's a very specific part of the plant. Don't use anything that has coconut oil in it. I also mentioned that in my previous skincare video, do not touch coconut oil if you have fungal acne because fungal acne directly feeds on coconut oil. You're literally feeding the problem. So cut off the source of the food for the problem and the problem will subside. The 100% plant derived squalene by The Ordinary. I mentioned this in the previous video too, but I'm going to highlight it again. This is the most important. The reason why fungal acne happens is because the pH balance of the skin 
goes out of order it's either too acidic too alkaline and it's not in the proper ph level that skin should be in in a healthy range if your skin is too dry you have a skin barrier that cannot protect itself and that's why it breaks out because it has an unhealthy skin barrier one of the reasons why your skin might have an unhealthy skin barrier is because it's not being moisturized properly or it doesn't have enough hydration so the squalane helps you restore that hydration and that glow on your skin if you have dry skin you will actually be prone to fungal acne as well because again you have an unhealthy skin barrier which causes the skin to be ph unbalanced so squalane is an excellent oil that you can use on fungal acne or skin that's compromised with malassezia because it's one of the three i believe there's three oils that are safe for malassezia folliculitis one of them being squalane and i would argue the best being squalane i believe the other ones are mct oil and mineral oil or something i use this mostly in the evening again after cleansing i won't just put this on without cleansing i feel like my skin will be too oily i will use this mostly in the pm but again since i sometimes cleanse my face in the morning i will follow this up after the cleanser i will never cleanse and not put squalene on because that's you're asking for trouble if you're just cleansing and leaving your skin if you have fungal acne you really want to moisturize as much as possible make sure your skin is not dry because that's what will exacerbate fungal acne having a compromised skin barrier they're again really affordable i believe these are like ten dollars or even less probably and make sure you get squalane 100 percent plant derived squalane and not hemi squalane i have hemi squalane here I am scared to use it just because there's other ingredients in it and I don't I don't know this is just one ingredient you know that it's not gonna cause a problem because it's one ingredient it's just squalane so I would really recommend if you were to pick up something from this video it would be squalane from the ordinary and make sure it's plant derived you guys I literally have three of these <laughs> I have back stock because I can't live without this after moisturizing my entire face with the plant derived squalane, I will actually go in with the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA Moisturizer by The Ordinary. Now before you hop on and say, oh my goodness, this is not going to be good for my fungal acne. I actually don't put this on the area where I struggle with fungal acne, but I will get fungal acne only on my forehead or kind of like the T-zone area right here. I never get it on my chin or anywhere else. I do not put this on my forehead. The rest of my skin, I feel, still needs more moisture. The squalane, honestly, is adequate enough, I believe. And I have really dry skin, so it's it's pretty good. You don't really need a follow-up moisturizer, in my opinion. You can just kind of leave it at that and use it as a serum and double it up as a moisturizer. But for the rest of my face, especially in the winter months that are coming, in Canada it gets really cold here and the air becomes really dry so I kind of use this on my cheeks and everywhere else that's not my forehead I wouldn't recommend this to someone who has fungal acne all over their face because there's ingredients that will make your fungal acne worse that's why I just put it on you know the rest of my face and exclude the forehead by the way I think a big misconception in skincare is that if you use a product you have to use it all over your face. I disagree with that. I think you can compartmentalize skincare. That's what I do. I don't use every single product that I'm showing you all over my face. I use different products for different areas of my face. Some parts of my skin are more problematic than others and some parts have different problems than others. So definitely don't feel like you need to, you know, like these TikTok skincare routines, put the products all over your face, every single product and layer it up. Not necessarily, you can use a product on one area of your face and then another product in another area of your face and cater it towards you tailor it to your skin and that's honestly what's helped me the most it's a really just basic moisturizer it's nothing special it kind of just is absorbed into the skin really nicely but it still leaves a thick thicker film on top which i like i don't like moisturizers to kind of soak in all the way 
where it, you put it on and it's just gone. I actually wanted to stay a little bit on the superficial layer of my skin too to give it like a nice glow if you're not wearing makeup or something, it's nice. I also want to say I believe Vanny Cream has glycerin in it. I'm not sure. Yes, it does have glycerin in it. Somebody commented under the video, Vanny Cream has glycerin in it. It can make melesthesia worse. Which I agree with because glycerin is an ingredient that exacerbates melesthesia. However, I have noticed with my experience of introducing new skincare products, sometimes the ingredient that melesthesia feeds on, if it's present in a product, it might not necessarily trigger your melesthesia or your fungal acne, depending on the ingredient and your skin and also the concentration of the ingredient. So this is a really exciting product because in the last video, I actually talked about this product by The Ordinary. It's very popular. It's called Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%. For all of you skincare fiends out there that watch skincare by Hiram or Cassandra Banks and I'm sure you guys are very educated on skincare already and I'm still learning too. I love their videos and they're very, very educational. Niacinamide is basically a miracle for skin. It helps oil regulation. The issue is I do not use this on, again, the area that I usually get malathesia, which is my forehead. I don't put this on my forehead because it will make it worse. I will put this on my nose, on my chin, places where I know I don't have fungal acne but I can still reap the benefits of this product. So I would not recommend this for fungal acne, however, niacinamide, the ingredient, I would recommend for fungal acne. So I was kind of in a dilemma because I was like, there's niacinamide in here, I want to use niacinamide but I kind of can't because it comes along with different ingredients that my skin will reject. So The Ordinary came out with 100% niacinamide powder, I believe a few months ago. It comes with a little scooper. I don't know if you guys could see that. It's very messy. I mean, it's okay. It's just like a white powder and it's 100% niacinamide powder. Again, this is by The Ordinary. It comes in this little jar and you get a lot of product in here. Just add a little bit. I probably use about half, not even half of the little scooper that it comes in. And what I do is for my face, I will mix it with the moisturizer, put it on my face. When I'm doing the squalene by the ordinary on my forehead, I will mix in a little bit of it with this too. And I haven't had any reaction because it is just nice. And my, if anything, I found that it really helped the inflammation because malassezia tends to be very inflammatory and kind of painful. Definitely try this, mix it in with your squalene and then if you want to put it all over your face, mix it in with your moisturizer. I found that this is really great. I did break out when I first used it but there's a difference between breaking out because of a product and purging. Niacinamide tends to make you purge because of the nature of the product. It kind of promotes cell turnover. I only use this in the PM and I do not use this every single night. I probably use this like once or twice a week. The Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay Mask. This is pretty much the only face mask, I would say the only face mask that I put on my face. I use this once a week or once every two weeks. Whenever I can remember to do a little self-care session, I will use this. Some shampoos and conditioners will actually cause you to break out because they might have ingredients in them which malassezia feeds on. If you have that issue, try cleansing after you come out of the shower. So if you have any residual shampoo or conditioner that got on your face in the shower, you can cleanse that off. I will always kind of tilt my head back and have the um, faucet kind of just run back and not forward because conditioners especially they have a lot of like different oils and ingredients in them even shampoos try to rinse back and avoid rinsing it on your skin because that can break you out too i am a big derma cleaner because i have a lot of baby hair on my face and i get a lot of sideburn peach fuzz and i got thick eyebrows so i like to derma plane it just makes everything look a lot more sleek clean sharp i guess you could say because you're getting rid of that peach fuzz but you can actually make your malassezia worse by dermaplaning because you're irritating the skin and then when the hair grows back it can grow back with new breakouts so if you suffer from folliculitis malassezia folliculitis 
you know, on your cheek area or maybe, you know, I don't know, your chin or something, try using a IPL laser. Why do I say that? Because in the word malassezia folliculitis or pittersporum folliculitis, folliculitis, if you notice, is derived from the word follicle. So this breakout or this skin condition is actually directly involved with your hair growth cycles. Malassezia happens when the hair follicle becomes infected and then inflamed. If you don't have technically a hair follicle or if you have a thinner hair follicle to begin with, doesn't it make sense that you would have less malassezia breakouts because it's literally an issue of folliculitis. It's a follicle, a hair follicle being infected at the root and you know, being inflamed. But if you lessen the root or the bulb of that hair and the presence of that hair, you ultimately reduce or prevent the onset of malassezia folliculitis because it's directly involved. Try using a laser, like a handheld laser. I think it will work for you. The third habit that I've picked up is changing my pillowcase frequently. I feel like this is something that you can do regardless of if you have malassezia or not. I will try to change my pillowcase every three days. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.